My name is Paniko and I'm 30 years old. My husband Takumi and I got married three years ago and that's also around when I became a freelance writer. I had been a regular saleswoman up until that point, but I wanted to get weekends off so I could spend more time with my husband. That's why I decided to make this big transition. And ever since I switched jobs, I have had more time to hang out with Takumi or spend the day doing nothing over the weekend. It's really nice being an independent writer. And Takumi has told me that since he's bringing enough money to put food on the table already, I can just work at my own pace and not push myself too hard. I can't thank him enough for being so understanding. And that's why I've been able to continue working this job up until now. And thankfully, because of my hard, persistent work, I've been getting a lot of job requests lately as well. You got another client? Wow, that's awesome! You're basically like a famous writer now. One of my coworkers told me that they read the article you wrote for the magazine the other day. I'm super proud of you, honey. I always knew you would make it. Well, I'm only here now because of your support. Thank you so much, honey. I really appreciate everything that you do for me. And just like that, my marriage was going really well, and I was getting along perfectly with my husband. And today was our third wedding anniversary, and we were supposed to go out and eat something delicious, so I decided to get a reservation at a famous Japanese barbecue restaurant that Takumi was interested in going. That night, I arrived in front of the restaurant right in time for the reservation, but I didn't see Takumi there. I waited for a couple of minutes, but he still didn't show up. Hmm, huh, that's weird. He's always early when it comes to these kind of things. I was getting a bit worried, so I was walking back and forth in front of the restaurant, but that's when... I'm so sorry I'm late, Paniko. I ran into a bit of trouble on my way here, and I couldn't make it in time. Oh, thank God you're here. I was getting a bit worried there, you know? I thought you got into an accident or something. When I looked at Takumi closely, I noticed something a bit off about him. Huh? Wait, what happened to the suit that you always wear? I've never seen you wearing that shirt before, and your hair is kind of messy too. Did something happen on the way here? Well actually, I was walking by the river earlier when I was heading here, but that's when I saw a puppy that was about to drown. I couldn't just ignore him and let him die, so I jumped in and saved him. But then all of my clothes ended up getting drenched, and I didn't have time to go back home to change. So uh, there was a clothing store on the way here, so I stopped by there and bought everything I'm wearing right now there. Oh, well, I see. He's always like this. When he sees people or animals suffering or in need of help, he always has to step in to help. He can't help himself. The other day, he gave his jacket to a homeless man because he thought he was going to freeze to death. He was about to freeze to death himself by the time he got back home. <laughs> and just a few days ago, he carried an old woman to her destination that was a few miles away just because she seemed tired. And whenever he sees someone with a disability in need of assistance, he always goes up to them and offers them his help. He's like a superhero, and I love that about him. And what happened to the puppy afterwards? Oh yeah, he was fine. The owner came back to pick him up afterwards, and he seemed to be in good spirits. But I'm really sorry I'm late, honey. And I know you like that suit I always wear, and I might not look as good in this, but this doesn't look too bad for a bunch of clothes I randomly picked off of a shelf. Now does it? Yeah, you look great. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what he wears. His personality is enough to make him super attractive. But man, I'm super impressed. You just saved a life on your way here. Not everyone can act so quickly like you, you know? I knew I was right to choose you, honey. <laughs> and so we walked into the restaurant, five minutes late, and as soon as we entered through the main doors, a waiter wearing a name tag that says Sato on it came running over to us. Welcome to our restaurant. Hello, sorry, I know we're a bit late, but I had a reservation for 7 p.m. The reservation should be under the name Panico, but while I was saying that, I noticed this Sato guy staring down my husband from head to toe. I was getting a bit confused, but that's when he aggressively said this. A reservation? You serious? 
You do realize that we're a very expensive restaurant, right? I bet you guys can't afford to eat here. Oh, I get it. It's your birthday or something, and you wanted to go somewhere that you usually can't. I see what's going on now. Uh, what the hell? Why is he talking to us like this? I was about to complain to him and ask him to stop disrespecting us, but he said this before I could even say anything back. I've worked here for a while now, and I can tell who's rich and who's not. And you guys are clearly not rich enough to dine here. Just look at your clothes. They look so cheap. Almost like you just grabbed them at Uniqlo or something. Again, we're an expensive joint, and you guys cannot come in here dressed like that. You're bringing shame to our name. Ugh. This is why I hate serving poor bastards like you guys. It's just a massive headache. Ugh, what the hell is this guy's problem? There's no way he actually thinks that he can talk to my husband like that. That's not fair. I could handle insults thrown in my face, but I wasn't willing to just stand there and let my husband get disrespected like that. And besides, this isn't even the stuff Takumi wears usually. He always wears expensive, tailor-made suits. But that really shouldn't matter to begin with. He shouldn't be commenting on how his customers are dressed anyway. That's just so disrespectful. And besides, even if he thinks that we're poor, why does he have to say it to our face? What kind of stuff are they teaching their servers here? Uh, I guess I'll have to let you guys in, though. You said your name was Panico, right? Okay, then. You can come on in. Here, let me show you to your table. And now he's laughing at my name. Sure, it might be a strange name, but that doesn't give him the right to laugh in my face about it. I was furious, but Sato didn't seem to notice that at all and started walking over to our table for the night. <sighs> hey, Takumi, I know you really wanted to come here, and that's why I got the reservation in the first place, but do you want to go somewhere else? The service here was clearly below our standards, and I asked Takumi if he wanted to cancel our reservation here and eat somewhere else instead. But... Hmm. Well, let's just sit down and see where things go from here. I read the reviews for this place, and they all said that the food was top-notch, so I want to try it out. <sighs> well, if Takumi says so. So I tried holding my anger in and followed Sato to our seat. But this Sato guy wasn't done yet. Before we even sat down, he said something else that pissed me off even more. All right. Here's your table for the night. We were shown to a small table that was in the back of the restaurant, far, far away from any windows. This table is definitely meant for one person. Um, what, what the hell? I thought I told you guys that I wanted a seat by the window when I made the reservation. What the hell is this? Well, I'm sorry, but we can't give you any seats like that. If you do sit by the windows, our other customers will be able to see you, and that might ruin their night. You people don't belong here, so we need to hide you away in the back of the restaurant. God, what is with this guy? Why does he have such a big problem with us being here? We had no choice to sit down at the table, though, and even though we waited for about 30 minutes, he never came to take our order. Meanwhile, he was out in the front of the restaurant greeting the richer-looking customers with a smile. He sounded very polite when he was talking to them. Oh, Mr. Narikin! Welcome back to our restaurant. It's always great to see you here. I don't have a reservation here tonight, but do you think you guys can prepare a seat for us? Of course, sir. You're always welcome here. And we actually have the best seat in the house open tonight. It's a seat right by the window, and you'll be able to see a great view of the city from here. Please, follow me. I'll show you to your seat right away. Oh, wow, this view is amazing. You're right. This has to be the best seat in the house. Thank you. Wait, what the hell? That should have been us sitting there. We were the one that reserved that seat. My blood began to boil watching that interaction take place, and I was so close to leaving. But Takumi still wanted to stay, so I had no choice but to control my anger. All right. Well, please call me when you're ready to order. And when the couple was ready to order, Sato ran over to their table to serve them. The difference between the way he was serving us and the way he was serving that rich-looking couple was astounding. It was almost unbelievable. 
I tried calling him so we could order many times, but he just kept ignoring us. Hey, Takumi, I don't know if I can handle this any longer. This is just infuriating. They shouldn't be treating us like this. Yeah, you're right. This place had good reviews, so I was looking forward to eating here. But I guess they don't treat all customers the same. What a shame. And when I looked around, I saw all of the poor-looking customers all sitting in the corner of the restaurant. They all looked unhappy with their experiences here, and the food doesn't seem very tasty either. What the hell is going on? Well, this is actually very interesting. There has to be something going on here. All right. Well, I'm even more determined to stay until the end now. I've got to find out what the problem is with this place. Well, looks like Takumi is invested in this experience now. That means I've got to stay here to the end no matter what happens. Let's just try to get the most of this experience then. And finally, after a long, excruciating 40 minutes, Sato came to our table to take our order. I'm sorry, but what the hell is your problem? You're being very, very rude to us. I raised my hand and called you many times, but you kept on ignoring us. What's up with that? Well, I'm sorry about that, but I just didn't notice you calling me. And besides, I've got better things to do than take your order now. And if you're gonna keep on complaining like this, then you can head back home. Serving you is already a big enough pain in the ass, and I don't appreciate your comments and complaints. <sighs> you're one of those typical poor customers that can barely afford their meal, but still likes to complain about our service. The door's over there, so please, head back home if you're not happy with our service here. Don't let it hit you on your way out. That bastard, how dare he think he can talk to us like this? He can't tell us what to do like this. You know what? Fine. I'll leave the stupid restaurant then. God, this was supposed to be a magical night, but this guy just ruined everything. I, I can't take this anymore. And just when I stood up to head to the door, Takumi walked over to me and whispered this into my ear. Hey, Paniko, look at what they're serving to the people at the table next to ours. And when I took a peek at the table he was talking about, I saw a waiter serving a bunch of meat to the couple that was sat there, but something was off. Hmm. Huh. Hey, we're thinking the same thing now, right? Yeah, we are. I know what you're trying to say. We silently exchanged glances and sat down. All right. Well, now that we both know what's going on, Let's order the most expensive course meal here, shall we? Hey, Mr. Sato, could you please get us this premier Chateau brand meal? Thank you. Takumi was grinning from ear to ear when he said that. Man, I've only seen him smile like this once before, and let me tell you, this isn't gonna be pretty. I can tell that he's furious right now, but Sato didn't seem to realize what was going on, and he continued to disrespect us. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? Do you even know what a Chateau Brand is? It's out of your price range, you idiot! You really shouldn't be ordering this, you know. Here, this is a better option for you. The cheapest course meal we have is right here on the menu. I recommend you guys get this instead. But Takumi ignored all of that and replied with this. Well, we're probably never gonna come here again, so we'd like to order the best thing here, you know? So could we please get the Chateau something? Thank you. Well, if you insist. Fine. I'll get you the Chateau brand course meal. You better be able to pay for it, though. And so he finally took our order down and headed into the kitchen. <laughs> well, he's disrespected us for far too long now. And it's time we got our revenge. If he thought that we wouldn't fight back and just roll over on our backs, He's gravely mistaken. Time to teach him a little lesson on what happens when someone ruins our wedding anniversary dinner like that. And 30 minutes later, the course meal that we ordered finally arrived. And Sato introduced the dish to us sarcastically. All right, thanks for waiting. This is the Chateau brand you ordered. You'll probably never eat anything like this again, so you better enjoy it. God, he's just so annoying. I've had enough of him. But when we looked at the meat that was brought out to us closely, we were both shocked at what we saw. I can't believe they would serve something like this to us. 
The underestimate is too much. This is insulting. And so I picked up one of the pieces of meat that was served to us with my fork and said this to Sato. Oh, wow, so this is the expensive meat that you were talking about, huh? This is kind of pathetic, actually. I thought it would be better than this. Maybe I expected too much out of you guys. When Sato heard that, he seemed shocked. What? What are you- This meat is from the local supermarket, isn't it? What? I'm guessing it costs around $4 per pound, maybe even less to be honest with you. Either way, this isn't anything close to a real chate brand. This is actually disgusting. Ugh. Yeah, my wife is right. Just by looking at the color and the way the muscles are attached to the meat, you can tell that this is sheep meat. And when he saw us picking the meat apart and analyzing its components, Sato started to panic. He finally realized that he was in trouble. Uh, what? But, but you guys are poor! You've never seen real Chateau brand in your life! How can you tell if it's fake or not, huh? Show me your proof! Wait a minute. You think we can't tell the difference between store-brought meat and a real Chateaubriand? You're kidding, right? Uh, who do you think we are? We're probably the most qualified people when it comes to critiquing food. Alright, time to drop the bombshell on him. <laughs> My husband is the head chef over at the famous restaurant, Joneiro Panicore. Oh, and I'm the independent online food critic called Panicon. You really thought you could fool us, didn't you? That's just pathetic. That's right. We knew from the moment we laid eyes on this piece of meat that it wasn't real Chateaubriand. We know exactly what these people are doing now. They serve the expensive meat they have in the kitchen to all of their rich customers, while they serve store-brought cheap meat to us peasants. Wait, you're kidding me, right? There's no way you're the head chef over at Chonier Panicore. That's a Michelin three-star restaurant, and you... I've heard of you, too. You have, like, a million followers on Instagram, don't you? You gotta be kidding me! And when Sato learned the truth about who we were, he fell to his knees and started sobbing. Soon after, the owner came out running from the back and apologized to us. We are so sorry about this. We had no idea that you were the head chef over at Shonyeru Panikori. And we also didn't know that you were the famous food blogger Panikon. Please, allow me to apologize. And if you would follow me, I can show you guys to your new VIP seats. But you should have told us who you guys were at the beginning. That way we could have just avoided all of this. What? Is this guy joking right now? What the owner just said seemed to piss Takumi off even more. And he went on a huge rant. You guys are absolutely pathetic. How dare you treat your customers like this? How dare you disrespect them and lie to them? You guys don't deserve to be in this business. You guys are absolute fools, and I'm ashamed to be in the same industry as you, idiots! Man, he's so menacing and cool when he's mad. Oh, I love him so much! I, I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry about everything, sir! But it was too late to apologize now. The damage had already been done. The other customers that were eating around us started to gather around our table as well. I knew something was off with this meat! And you're charging us $200 for this? What a joke! And the service here is terrible, too! All the pent-up frustration finally started to come out, and they were all directed at Sato and the restaurant owner. No way! Someone help! Please forgive us, guys! Please! <laughs> you get what you deserve! And so the two were kicked around by all of the customers that they had disrespected, and while the two were on the ground trying to get out of the huddle, Takumi and I left the restaurant. And it didn't take long for the media to catch wind of this incident, and the government quickly stepped in and shut the restaurant down! <laughs> I found this out afterwards, but apparently Sato is the owner's nephew, and they were working together to scam some of the poorer-looking customers that visited the restaurant. 
but they had tons of debt left over from when they first opened the restaurant, and the debt collectors finally caught them after a couple of weeks and sent them on a fishing boat so they could earn their way out of their debt. Good riddance. Hopefully they never open up another restaurant again. Oh yeah, and after I wrote an article about the whole incident, I started getting even more job requests. I was mostly doing this food critic thing as a side gig, but now it's starting to become more like a full-time job. I'm not complaining, though. It's fun being a food critic. Oh, yeah, and Takumi and I are eating at an Italian restaurant today to make up for that anniversary dinner. Hey, Takumi, I'm over here. Hey, sorry I'm late again, Paniko. Wait, why are you just like that? You were wearing something different when you left for work this morning, right? Yeah, I was. I ran into a bit of trouble again on my way here and... <laughs> Wait, again? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. But there was a little bird on the ground that fell from his nest, so I climbed a tree and put him back up. After all was said and done, though, my clothes were all muddy, so I had to change. Oh, I see. Well... I hope you never change, honey. <laughs> Thank you for watching! What kind of crazy people will we get to see next? Stay tuned for more! <laughs>